what induced him to do that. He urged me to go and then to spoil it all. He's jealous. Oh, jealous of what? He knows his inferior to you and it fills him with black hatred. He's jealous of your shadow, jealous of your world. The man's mad, you can't stop with him. Let's go back to Ireland. It suffered terribly. I've done him many and many a wrong. Wrong to love him. Wrong to marry him. No children. A burden when he was trying to save his soul in this new country. Why should he not hate me? Your debt's paid, I tell you. It's done with, it's finished. You, you owe him nothing. If you understood, you could not talk about owing a debt. Sam is part of me and I'm part of Sam forever and ever. And it was long ago when I was very young that I learned that. But it was true and nothing can change it. We used to ride for miles and miles and hours and hours together. Sam five paces behind, silent and respectful like a good groom. And I shivering with delight because I knew of the love he had for me. My father never bothered how long we were away. He knew Sam was reliable and that I would come to no harm. We would sit on the heather, overlooking Galway Bay and the ocean beyond. Still, deep and silent, as his love for me. I knew about love, you see, for they had talked of it to me in their soft, sweet, wheedling Irish voices. Oh, we never did speak. Till once, when we were in Dublin for the horse show. Yes, Sam was holding my horse in his outside a shop in Grafton Street. As he held the stirrup for me to mount, he suddenly said in his gruff voice, this is killing me. And I said, oh, Dear Sam, then I'll save you. That night, I took all the jewels I had brought for the Viceroy's ball. And we rode all the night through the cloudy smell of rain to draw down and found a man with a fishing boat who took us across the channel to Scotland. There we found a horse dealer who sold us two beasts, who took us the long, rough ride to Gretna Green. And the blacksmith made us man and wife. And oh, but I was weary. We had our wedding breakfast in the little inn. I was looking across the table at Sam. He was tired too. But he was a tidy man who always liked to be busy and he was cleaning and reloading the big horse pistol, pistol we'd brought with us. And laughing, singing a funny little tune to himself. Then my brother Dermot came in. He was a hard rider with Dermot. That was the only good thing about him. He had a pistol in his hand. And there was murder in his eyes. And he said to me, Are you married then? And I said, Yes. And he said, Then by heaven you shan't enjoy it. And he leveled his pistol at me. But Sam jumped across, covering me with his body. And I reached across for the horse pistol and shot Dermot dead. Under Sam's arm. Under Sam's arm. Oh. 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 He had a surprised look in his eyes. 
when he crumbled up. His pistol went off as he fell. They found the bullet later in the window frame. And that saved Sam's neck. For he took the blame. I was ill, so ill that I, I knew nothing. My family kept everybody away from me. They wanted to avoid the scandal, you see. I was delirious for weeks and then... Then I heard what he had done for me. He was in chains, in a convict ship. Half a world away from me. He wrote to me. If you honor what, what has been between you and me, not a word. You must do this for me, my dear darling. I couldn't speak after that. You understand that, don't you? I had to obey him. But I... I did the only thing I could. I followed him out here and I spoke to him sometimes through the bars. How did you live all those years? What does that matter now? I thought it would comfort him to know that I was there. Charles, I had hoped to have a home for him when he came out, to make up for all that he had suffered. And I thought we could start life afresh in this new country. But so, so many hideous things became part of him. Horrible little hut down by the docks. And the sweating walls and the wood bugs and the smells. And the drunken screaming women. And the children raking the gutters for food. All, all that hot misery. It became me. Sam tried to make up for it when his time was finished. It was no good, Charles, no good at all. Because it is, it is part of me. Even now, I sometimes long to go down, down, down to where I can go no further, down. Where nothing can hurt me anymore. No man alive is worth that sacrifice. <laughs> Do you think he understands what you've done? Oh, my darling, you still have some life to live. Come away, come away from all this. When Sam blundered in that room this evening, he cancelled everything you owed him. No, Charles, no, no. Oh, you don't know. You couldn't do that sort of thing at Government House, Sam. Eh? 